أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The one and only God Peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Whom no other Prophet will come after him لا إله إلا الله محمد عبده ورسوله there is no God to worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wednesday, the 8th of March 2023 at Maghrib will mark the night of 15th of Sha'ban, 1444 Hijrah. Also referred to as Laylat al-Bara'a, Laylat al-Nifsu min Sha'ban or Shabi Barat. Most scholars agree that the night of 15th of Sha'ban is not mentioned in the Qur'an, nor is the authentic Ya'ni Sahih hadith reported about the 15th night of Sha'ban. But whether it is mentioned in the Qur'an or not, it is still a blessed night. The importance of the 15th night of Sha'ban is a subject of debate among Muslims. Some celebrate the night with special prayers and fast the following day, while others say that this practice is not from the Sunnah. However, some contemporary scholars see that the reason for celebrating the 15th night of Sha'ban is mainly to commemorate the change of the direction of prayer from Jerusalem to Mecca and not any other reason. But the date of this change is not certain to be Sha'ban the 15th. The exact date of this event is also controversial among scholars. Some scholars even say that the miraculous splitting of the moon took place on one of the middle nights of Sha'ban, that is the 13th, 14th or 15th night. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The reality is that scholars consider the hadith about the 15th of Sha'ban as being sound, yani sahih, Good, yani Hassan, weak, yani Daif, and also fabricated, yani Maudu. However, due to the fact that there are numerous hadiths and the weaknesses of many of the hadith is not severe, the virtue of this night is accepted as authentic by scholars. Example of the hadiths are Great Sahih li ghairihi, yani authentic due to external evidence, according to Al Arna'ut. Sahih ibn Hibban Mu'ath ibn Jabbal reported that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks down at his creation on the middle nights of Sha'ban and he forgives all of his creatures except for an idolater or one filled with malice. Great Hassan yani fair according to Al-Albani Sunan ibn Majah it was narrated from Abu Musa al-Ash'ari that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks down on the night of the middle of Sha'ban and forgives all his creation apart from the idolater and the mushahin. Another chain from Abu Musa from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with similar wording. Great Da'if, yani weak, according to Dar es Jami al Tarmidhi, Aisha radiallahu anha narrated, I could not find the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one night, so I left and found him at Al Baqi. He said, Did you fear that you had been wronged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Messenger? I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I thought that you had gone to one of your wives. So he said, Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mighty and sublime is he, descends to the lowest heavens during the nights of the middle of Sha'ban to grant forgiveness to more than the number of hairs on the sheep of Banu Kalb. Great Maudu, yani fabricated, according to Darussalam. Maudu means fabricated or forged, hadith having wording opposite to the confirmed prophetic traditions. Sunan ibn Majah. It was narrated that Ali bin Abu Talib radiallahu anhu said, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, When it is in the night of the middle of Sha'ban, 
spend its night in prayer and observe a fast on that day. For Allah descends at sunset on that night to the lowest heaven and says, Is there no one who will ask me for forgiveness, that I may forgive him? Is there no one who will ask me for provision, that I may provide for him? Is there no one who is afflicted by trouble, that I may relieve him? And so on until dawn comes. Ibn Taymiyyah says, So many hadiths and reports exist regarding the excellence of the 15th night of Sha'ban that one is compelled to accept that this night does possess some virtue. This is the general consensus of scholars regarding this night. But according to Muhammad Saleh al munajjid author of ruling on celebrating the middle of Sha'ban, when this notion, Yaqni, celebrate with special prayers and fast the following day, was circulated in the Muslim world, controversy arose concerning the correctness of such a deed. The majority of scholars in Mecca and Medina then, including Atta, Ibn Abi Mulaika, the followers of Malik and others, disapproved of such a deed, considering it a bid'ah, Yaqni, innovation, in religion or that has been introduced to Islam. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has perfected our religion for us and has completed his favor upon us and blessings and peace be upon his prophet and messenger Muhammad the prophet of repentance and mercy. Surah Al-Ma'idah 5 verse 3 Today I have perfected your faith for you completed my favor upon you and chosen Islam as your way. This clearly indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfected the religion of this ummah and completed his favor upon them. He did not take the soul of his Prophet wasallam until he had conveyed the message clearly and explained to the ummah everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for it of words or deeds. Imam Abu Bakr al-Tartushi, may Allah have mercy on him, said in his book, Al-Hawadith wal Bida'a, Ibn Waddah narrated that Zaid ibn Aslam said, We never met anyone among our sheikh and fuqaha, yani Muslims who study on the nature of God and religious belief, who paid any attention to Laylatul Nisfu min Sha'ban, or who paid any attention to the hadith of Makul, or who thought that this night was any more special than any other night. It was said that even Abi Malika, that Ziyad al-Numairi was saying that the reward of Laylatul Nisfu min Sha'ban was like the reward of Laylatul Qadr. He said, If I heard him say that and I had a stick in my hand, I would hit him. Ziyad was a storyteller. Imam al-Nawawi said in his book, Al-Majmu, The prayer that is known as Salat al-Raghaib, which is 12 rak'ahs between Maghrib and Isha, on the night of the first Friday in Rajab, and the prayer of Laylatul Nisfu min Sha'ban, of 100 rak'ahs. These two prayers are reprehensible bid'ah, yani innovation. In Al-Lauli, he said, 100 rak'ahs in the middle of Sha'ban, Reciting Suratul Ikhlas ten times in each, this is maudu, yani fabricated, and all its narrators in its three isnads are majhul, yani unknown, and da'if, yani weak. He said, twelve rak'ahs reciting al Ikhlas thirty times in each, this is maudu, and fourteen rak'ahs, this is also maudu. Muhammad Saleh al munajid continues, From the ayahs, hadiths, and scholarly opinions quoted in his book, it is clear that celebrating the middle of Sha'ban by praying on that night, or in any other way, or by singling out that day for fasting, is a bid'ah, which is denounced by most of the scholars. It has no basis in the pure sharia, Rather, it is one of the things that was innovated in Islam after the time of the Sahaba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of them. 
Sahih Muslim. It is narrated that Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, Do not single out the night yakni preceding Friday among the nights for prayer, and do not single out Friday among days for fasting, but only when anyone among you is accustomed to fast yakni on dates which coincides with this day yakni Friday. If it were permissible to single out any night for special act of worship, the night of Jum'ah, yakni Friday night, would be the most appropriate because the day of Jum'ah, yakni Friday, is the best day upon which the sun rises as it's stated in the previous Sahih Hadith. Since our Prophet wasallam warned us against singling out that night for praying Qiyam, that indicates that it is even more prohibited to single out any other night for acts of worship except where there is sahih evidence to indicate that a particular night is to be singled out. In Maraqi al-Falah, Qiyam means spending most of the night in worship, or it was said, spending one hour of it in reading Qur'an, listening to hadith, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani tasbih, or sending blessings upon our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is prescribed to spend the nights of Laylatul Qadr, yani night of power, and other nights of Ramadan in prayer by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which he drew attention to that, and he also urged his ummah to pray Qiyam during those nights which he also did that himself. Sahih Hadith by Sunan al Nasai. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever stands in the voluntary night prayer of Ramadan out of faith and in the hope of reward, his previous sins will be forgiven. And whoever spends the night of Laylatul Qadr in prayer out of faith and in the hope of reward, his previous sins will be forgiven. But if it were prescribed to single out the night of the middle of Sha'ban, or the night of the first Friday in Rajab, or the night of the Isra Mi'raj, for celebration for any special acts of worship, then our Prophet would have taught his Ummah to do that, and he would also have done it himself. If anything of that sort had happened, his companions, may Allah be pleased with all of them, would have transmitted it to the Ummah, and they would never have concealed it from them, for they are the best of people, and the most sincere after our Prophet Muhammad wasallam. and may Allah be pleased with all the companions of the Messenger of Allah wasallam. According to a kitab, Mada fi Sha'ban, by Professor Dr. Sayyid Muhammad al-Maliki, a hadith expert and a great scholar, he outlined that there are three things that happen in the month of Sha'ban that are so valuable and important to the Muslims. One, the shifting of Qibla from Masjid al-Aqsa to Masjid al-Haram in Mecca, which happens on the second year of the Hijrah in the month of Sha'ban. Before our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu made the migration, yani hijrah to Medina, he was always facing towards Masjid al-Aqsa, but also made Kaaba as the in-betweener, which means he was always facing both yani Masjid al-Aqsa and the Kaaba at the same time. Number two, all our deed will be taken up in the month of Sha'ban. Hassan Hadith by Sunan and Nasai. Usama ibn Zaid radiallahu anhu said, I said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I do not see you fasting any month as much as Sha'ban. He said, That is a month to which people do not pay much attention to between Rajab and Ramadan. It is a month in which the deeds are taken up to the Lord of the world, and I like that my deed be taken up when I am fasting. In the month of Sha'ban, we do not know which date, we do not know which hour. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to lift up our deeds for the past year. 
So our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, increased his qiyam and fasted in the month of Sha'ban. Because he did it so much that the companions even noticed it and asked why he did that. Then our Prophet replied, Because I like my deeds to be lifted while I'm fasting. And our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, fasted more than 10 voluntary fast, yani sunnah fasting, in the month of Sha'ban. Number 3. The Revelation of Surah Al Ahzab 33, verse 56. Indeed, Allah showers His blessings upon the Prophet, and His angels pray for Him. O believers, Invoke Allah's blessings upon him and salute him with worthy greetings of peace. Regarding this ayah, Imam Shahabuddin bin al-Qastalani and Imam al-Hajar al-Asqalani reported that this ayah was brought down on the second year of Hijrah in the month of Sha'ban. From all these reports, ayahs, hadiths and scholars' opinions, we can safely deduce that the whole month of Sha'ban is indeed one of the blessed months for us Muslims to grab the opportunity to acquire more deed by doing a lot more qiyam, fast, sadaqah, not just in terms of finance, even a smile can be a sadaqah. Since there isn't any sound hadith that can stipulate the exact date of certain said event, and also based on the hadith Sahih Muslim, do not single out the night preceding Friday among the nights for prayer and do not single out Friday among days for fasting. One should take advantage of the whole month of Sha'ban as a blessed month rather than just one single night of Sha'ban. But having said that, in accordance with Ulama Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, some hadith justifies the merits of the night of the 15th of Sha'ban Yakni Nisfu Sha'ban. One example of hadith such as Ibn Hibban narrated from Wa'ad Ibn Jabbal in his Sahih the following narration, which the hadith scholar and editor of the Sahih Shu'aib al Na'ud confirmed as sound. The Prophet said, Allah looks at his creation in the night of mid Sha'ban and he forgives all his creation except for a mushrik, idolater or a mushahin, one bent on hatred. An important note, all the weak hadith which talks about the merits of the 15th of Sha'ban have got only minor weaknesses in them. Going by the principle of hadith, these weak hadiths also strengthens each other. Whichever one you are inclined to take, all of the hadiths mentioning Sha'ban, they all have one in common. They invigorate and propel the month of Sha'ban's rank just after the month of Ramadan. Rather than debating about when is the best days and time to read the Quran, or how many Sunnah Raka'ah should we do, is it 14 Raka'ah or 100 Raka'ah? Why not just do as many Raka'ah as you can and maybe a bit extra? And instead of reading the Quran just on Jumu'ah, yani Friday, read it every day. Whoever is seeking extra blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed month of Sha'ban and to glorify the coming month of Ramadan, I will leave you with a hadith, Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. For us living in the West, where non-Islamic influences are very strong, let's try and focus on the good and our common values as a Muslim and instill a genuine love for Islam in ourselves and also to our youth. Do what we can on our own time and celebrate the 15th of Sha'ban, Ya'ni Nisfu Sha'ban, with the rest of our Muslim brothers and sisters out there. This not only strengthen our relationship, but also encourage everyone to be good Muslims, insha'Allah. Sahih al-Bukhari, narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, our Lord Almighty descends to the lowest heaven in the last third of every night, saying, Who is calling upon me that I may answer him? Who is asking from me that I may give him? Who is seeking my forgiveness that I may forgive him? 
Sahih Muslim, Abu Hurairah radhiyallahu anhu reported Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam as saying, Allah descends every night to the lowest heaven when one third of the first part of the night is over and says, I am the Lord. I am the Lord who is there to supplicate me so that I answer him, who is there to beg of me so that I grant him, who is there to beg forgiveness from me so that I forgive him. He continues like this till the day breaks. Wallahu alam bi sawab. Ya Allah, please teach us knowledge that is beneficial to us. Let us take advantage of the knowledge that you pour on to us. Please give us knowledge, good deeds, and sincerity in our lives. May we receive mercy and guidance from you, Ya Allah. Please increase our iman and ilmu so that we can pass them down to our children, family, friends, and all our loved ones. Until my next video, inshallah. Please take care and be kind to one another. Jazakumullahu khairan and shukran.